Hi everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shroud. Today we're gonna to take a look at the HP Z1 workstation that I have sitting here next to me. It's a workstation class computer that is an all-in-one device. And it starts with the 27 inch 2560 by 1440 IPS panel that is really nice. But since it's a workstation, it includes parts like Xeon processor, uh, Quadro graphics, that type of thing. And it is a, a workstation device from HP, and it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. It's not your traditional all-in-one kind of budget thing. But with that, you get things like ISV support, ISV profiles, you get Linux and Windows support, which is unique to computers uh, today, really. You get worldwide availability, a three-year warranty. These are all things that workstation class devices really need, really require. Uh, use cases for this would be like, obviously, AutoCAD, 3D modeling, media and entertainment, higher education, that type of stuff. Uh, but it also is a really unique computing device just in the fact that it's an all-in-one, easy access uh, to all the parts inside, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at the HP Z1. Looking at the outside of the HP Z1 always starts with the display. It's 2560 by 1440, 27-inch panel, IPS, very crisp, very high quality. Really liked using this display while we had it. If we turn this to the side, you'll see the profile of the Z1. It's not super thin, but considering all the components and hardware that we have inside, it's actually pretty impressive how thin it is. You can also see a little bit of the how the stand structure works here, uh, adjustable height as well as uh, adjustable angle. If we turn this to the, to the back, you'll see this plate here that kind of hides the visa mount, which is actually interesting on this. This whole system can be visa mounted, and if you have multiple displays, you can actually uh, you know, mul uh, just mount them to visa uh, at the same time as that as well. And if we look at this side, we've got our power button, we've got our uh, LEDs for, for activity on the hard drive, we've got the Blu-ray optical drive. Down here we have a multi-function multi memory card reader, we have a Firewire connection, two USB 3.0 ports, and even analog audio for headphone and microphone. And also we have additional connections on the, on the back here that include things like your Ethernet port, your digital and more analog audio connections, and as well as a full display port connection to attach a secondary monitor. Now, one of the other interesting things about this system is obviously that you can access the parts inside. And how do you do that? Well, you simply fold this back and then push the entire system down and when you do that it kind of locks in place um, and we have underneath these speakers on the front there's actually two latches on either end and when you just push pull those to the side the whole system opens up and you can access all the components taking a look inside the Z1 you can actually see that it's very clean very well designed inside of here. Uh, if we go over the specifications of what's inside the build, we have underneath this assembly, the processor, it's a Xeon E3-1245 Sandy Bridge based quad-core hyper-threaded processor up to 3.7 gigahertz with turbo. It does include HD graphics, uh, P30 is the branding. The next specification that's important is obviously the Quadro graphics. And even though this looks like a full-size discrete graphics card, it's actually an MXM module. If we remove the latch there, you can see that this is actually the only PCB portion right here. The rest of it is heat sink assembly above it and a fan assembly there. Um, and it's an MXM module full six by 16 connection, uh, PCI Express by two on there. We have a 400 watt power supply that is removable as well. 90% efficiency, it runs, the whole system actually runs very quietly. We have eight gigs of memory. You can see you got four DIMM slots here. So you have uh, upgradable up to 32 gigs on that. We've got our Blu-ray drive here. If we look at the storage, um, we have a, an Intel 320 series, 300 gigabyte SSD, also easily removable. And uh, you can see on the sled, there's room for a second two and a half inch drive that matches up with those hot swap bays on there. So another upgrade path option for if you want to go that route. We have the speakers here. You also have this regular USB connection that uh, is, happens to be used for the HP's included keyboard and mouse dongle. So it's kind of nice if you want to upgrade your keyboard or change the keyboard, you can just put your own uh, 
USB dongle in there. You don't have to worry about anything external to the system. So that, that's kind of the overview on the specifications. Everything is very easy to remove. Everything's very easy to change and install. It's built like a, a kind of a, a high-end server would be built. And it's really nice to see an all-in-one PC with this kind of uh, emphasis on design. With all of that hardware, how does the HP Z1 perform as we have it configured? Well, the processor, the E3-1245 processor, is actually a Sandy Bridge-based design. So it's not the latest, but it's pretty good. And it's quad-core, hyper-threaded part. And it ranges from 3.3 to 3.7 gigahertz, as I mentioned. So it's, it's going to perform at the high end of the Intel kind of consumer line of processors. So that's going to be more than good enough, I think, to handle the range of workstation-class computing that you're going to be doing on this. With the storage, the Intel 320 300 gigabyte SSD uh, was ran very quickly, 190, 195 megabytes per second in our benchmarking. Uh, but it is a SATA 2 or SATA 3G device, so it's not exactly pegging out the specifications like some of the more recent SSDs on the market. But in terms of keeping the system fast and speedy and responsive, it does a very, very good job at that. If we look at the Quadro graphics, the 3000M is this particular model. Um, it's Fermi-based design, but it only has 240 CUDA cores, which actually put it between a GTX 560 and a 550, if we look at it on the, on the consumer side of things. Uh, and the clock speeds are a little bit lower than we're used to seeing as well. And that's all because on an MXM module, we have a 75 watt TDP that they have to meet as well. So performance, you know, you're not going to be gaming at super high resolution, which is a shame on the 2560 by 1440 panel, but you'll be able to do some gaming. And uh, for the professional that needs to do AutoCAD 3D modeling, all that kind of stuff, I think you'll find that the 3000M will be more than competent for those needs. If you look at pricing, even though HP says, and, and it's true, you can actually buy one of these starting at $1749, our particular model was priced at $4,600. And that includes upgrades for the SSD, for the 3000M Street graphics, for the memory, uh, a, a bunch of things like that. So it's definitely more expensive than your traditional all-in-one PC. Workstation professional users are, are used to those types of prices that, that probably won't scare them. Um, but and with that you get you know a lot of the extra support software support that we were talking about before I think for a workstation user that maybe is tired of the the same old beige box black box design something sleek and interesting like this that's still functional with a lot of hardware expandability with the devices and, and even using an extra monitor the HP Z1 will still make a lot of sense I'm Ryan Shroud for PC Perspective thanks for watching